Alright, so what is up guys? In this video I'm going to be going over what interfaces are in Kotlin. And let's just get started immediately by creating a few of them and seeing what they do. So the first thing we will do is go to our source file and right click on it and click on new Kotlin file dot class. And this time we are going to go ahead and click on the interface. So let's give this interface a name and let's call it Apple. So an interface is going to be a lot like an abstract class in which we create kind of the structure of what a program should do, the contract of what the program should do, and then we can use this and implement it in different classes. So let's just get started immediately by typing a very basic function. And inside this interface, we will call this function fruits. And inside we will write print line, I am a fruit. And then let's go ahead and create another function. So let's go new, Kotlin file class interface, and we're going to call this one banana. And banana is going to have a value of sugar, and that's going to be of type int. Then we're going to create the same function that we had in Apple, so function fruit. So let's control copy that and paste it right in here. And let's also create a function that has no body, but returns a certain data type. So we'll write function write something, and that's going to return a string. And finally, we're going to create another random function, function hello, and inside here we will write print line hello mate with an exclamation mark. So that's all we have to do with our interfaces so far. We created kind of a structure for our program. And once we implement this interface, we will have to follow what it has or the program will not allow you to continue. So another simple example would be having a lamp. You really want to make sure that it has a switch and that the power is on. So you can add all of those functions and values in the interface. That just makes it easy for the coder to know that he must use these functions and that is how the lamp works. But uh, let's continue with the apple and banana interface. So let's go back to our main Kotlin file and inside here we are going to do a few things. And the first one is create a class. So we're going to write class fruit and that's going to inherit from the banana interface. And you may have noticed that as soon as we have decided to inherit from the banana interface, you will get this red error on the class fruit. And if you just alt enter on this class fruit, you'll see it gives us a few warning messages and solutions. And the main reason being it requires us to implement the functions that are inside the interface. The program will not work unless we implement these functions. So the banana had write something and sugar.int that must be implemented. So if we click on OK, you'll see that we will have a overridden getter method for the sugar so we can assign it a value and we'll have an overridden function for the write something. And you may have noticed that it did not require us to override the fruit function and the hello function. That is because we already have some code inside it which tells the program okay, we already handled this part, but you can definitely override it if you want. So if you go in here and you type in override function fruit, it will call super.fruit. And you can write whatever you want in there, like print line, I am a crazy fruit. For sugar, we will write 10, maybe 10 grams of sugar, who knows. And for the write something function, we are just going to remove this block and we're going to add the equal sign. And we're just going to write, I am writing something. So all of these functions have been used besides the hello one, which we can also use over here, and it will just call super.hello. But uh, we have created the structure for the fruit. It tells you how much sugar there is. It writes something. It says that I'm a crazy fruit, and it also says hello. Pretend these are the basic functions of the fruit. And using this interface just made sure that we would do what we had to do with the banana. So if we go back to function main, we can definitely instantiate this by doing value fruit, equals fruits. And then right below, we can definitely call all of these methods that we have overridden. So we can do write something. And then we can also go fruits dot hello. We can also write print line fruits dot sugar. And I absolutely forgot that our write something function is actually an expression that returns a string. So to make this work, we will just surround this by parentheses and write print line fruit write something because that will return us this string. And finally, we also want to write the fruit dot fruit function. And then we can just go ahead and click on play to see what we have done. But anyway, here you'll be able to see that the first function that we wrote is I am writing something because we print lined this statement over here. And then we have the hello function that was called by the fruit It says hello mate. The sugar of the banana is 10 because we decided to write fruit dot sugar in that print line statement. And finally, we have the fruit.fruit function that says, I am a crazy fruit. 
So we implemented everything we had to from the interface and that just simplified life by a lot. Now there's one more example I want to go over before I finish this video and just imagine you had multiple interfaces. So to add multiple interfaces, all you have to do is add a comma and write the other interface you would like to add. So this class fruit is going to use banana and apple. Now, usually this would be very easy and fine to do because it will just give you an error and it will tell you which you need to override. But there's another problem. Right now we have a function called fruits in apple and a function called fruits in banana. So exactly which one is being overridden? At the moment it will override both of them and we don't really want that. We want each of them to be specific. So let's just get rid of this fruit over here and we will get the error. It will say implement members and we can implement it for banana and for apple. Let's click on OK. You'll see that we have two functions that are named exactly the same and it will give us an error for that, conflicting overloads. So what we have to do here is actually delete one of them. So to know which interface we are going to override, all we have to do is add the super keyword and just write some angle brackets and type in the interface inside there. And with that, we can call the function fruit. So you'll have super apple dot fruit. And that means we are calling the function that came from the apple interface. And you can do the exact same thing with the banana just by adding the term banana in here. So when we play this program, it will print both of their functions separately, such as let's change this to I am a banana fruit and I am an apple fruit. Now we can just delete all of these statements and click on play. So with these super functions, we were allowed to take the original functions and call both of them separately, regardless of sharing the same function. And if you want to make sure that you call different functions, you can definitely just go in here and write function fruit banana. And inside here, you can just take the super banana and insert it inside there. And you can just remove this part here. So calling fruit will only call the apple fruit, while calling fruit banana will call the original super banana fruit. And this is one way to separate the functions from both of the interfaces. So let's just go ahead and call fruit dot fruit banana. And you will see that we have successfully solved the issue of having conflicting function names. And that's all I wanted to go over in this video. I just wanted to show you that you can use interfaces to keep a clean project structure. And it just simplifies life by making sure everything that has to be implemented gets implemented. And yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next Scotland video.